Hello, this is Minder Chen. Welcome back to uh, this series of lecture on electronic commerce, which is part of the Management Information System course. And we're going to look at e-commerce in the context of uh, network economy. Uh, in the network economy, uh, which means conducting business online, either as a producer or a consumer, and we're moving from from physical local store to global and virtual store um we are also um um our business asset also change from a tangible asset like storefront uh, to intangible one like a web uh, website presence and also, once you're online, it's very easy to change um, the type of products and service you carry or changing the price. You can change the price instantly. And unlike, uh, for instance, if, you're, um, if you, you have a mail order business, you have to print the catalog, uh, wait in advance, and fix the price. And it's impossible for you to change the price after the catalog has been printed. So the business change can be pretty dramatic once you uh, move your business online. And the traditional business, uh, we tend to focus on mass production, but um, the IT-enabled web business, uh, it's much easier um, to, to mass customize uh, our product and service and also to be able to provide more personalized service to the individual customer. So make sure you kind of study this uh, definition of customization and personalization. Customization tends to uh, referring to, to um, maybe the, the, the products and, and the services. And personalization tends to referring to um, our experience um, with a website when they take our personal profile and interest into consideration. As an example of mass customization, a, a really good kind of poster child of mass customization is uh, Zazzle, uh, Zazzle.com. Um, as you can see, a, a screen snapshot of its website. Uh, you're allowed to kind of upload your own image to uh, to actually uh, purchase um, a necktie, a mug, a hat, a T-shirt, and based on the picture that you um, uh, upload it. Um, but what's even more um, unique about this website is um, it is a market-making website. Uh, what does that mean? It means that if you're an ins inspiring young designer, you have some really good you have some really good design. You can actually upload your design to Zazos.com, and Zazos will help you to list your design such that uh, when other people come and pick on um, your design and, and the print the mug, a, a hat, or a t-shirt, you will get a percentage of the sales. Uh, so basically, you can use Zazzle as a marketplace to sell your design and to make money. And from Zazzle's viewpoint, they can provide uh, different kinds of design other than user uploaded uh, content or image. And the, the creation of Zazos is by two brothers um, who, who uh, I, I guess maybe still in college when they try to throw a party um, for, um, um, for their fraternity. Um, they, they found that it's kind of difficult to try to get a custom t-shirt made. Uh, either it's, it, the quality is not good or, or the price is too high. Uh, so, so they search and eventually figure out some unique uh, digital custom printing technology. And this is not just for t-shirt anymore, but t-shirt, mug, necktie, etc. Um, so to some extent, this is a good example of what I'm saying here on the top that 
the unfulfilled need of the user um, is really the um, the driver or the mother of invention. And so, to some extent, Zazzle is not just a technology company who has this kind of unique um, digital uh, custom printing technology, but it, it is a, a market maker, as I mentioned, that you're allowed to actually sell your design through Zazzle. Uh, you can follow this link to study this market maker concept uh, further. And so to some extent, this kind of mass customization ecosystem or marketplace that Zazzle has created allow them to create a, a niche market in, in a niche market. So here we, we use the phrase called niching the niche, which means customer printing, but in this case, not just customer printing, but allowed uh, designer to sell their custom design to other customer. You can follow this link to study this further. Okay, there are some um, kind of basic principle or pattern in the network or information economy. And one is that information is, is very costly to produce, uh, like an encyclopedia, but uh, you can you can reproduce it cheaply. Um, um, printing a high quality encyclopedia can be relatively more expensive, but uh, burning into a DVD or it's actually posted online, um, um, the reproduction cost can be reduced um, dramatically. However, when you need to price um, this type of information, you should price according to its value, not uh, its reproduction cost. And also, uh, in the information economy, the information that you've uh, generated or you own is part of your intellectual property. So you need to um, you need to learn and protect your intellectual property, and also try to um, figure out a way to utilize it to help you to generate revenue. An information. Uh, or service we try to provide on the web is really an experience good. So when you're selling experience good, um, one of the challenges that how you can let people to experience without first charging them, and or allow them to um, return the good or services in case uh, they they have a bad experience after purchasing it. Um, go and visit. Zappos, Zappos.com. Zappos uh, started as an uh, online shoes company. They now expand it to other merchandise. And see how Zappo um, have figured out a way to, to actually uh, sell shoes, which to some extent is considered experience good because you, you pretty much have to try it on first. And, Walk, walk a few steps in the shoe store, uh, but if you're selling online, there's no um, no way they can try the shoes on before they uh, click the uh, buy button. And and since um, it's experience good, so the brand and, and the trust building become uh, a critical element to its success uh, of e-commerce side to sell this type of experience good. And also in the network economy, um, some people consider it, it's so-called um, um, the economics of attention, which means how to get people's attention is a, actually uh, a very important factor to your success. And th there's a phrase we often uh, refer to called a wealth of information creates a property of attention. Um, people are overloaded with lots of information. And if you can get people's attention, which their attention span tends to be very, very short, then you will get a winning formula in terms of um, sell your product or services to, uh, to your customer. Um, because you um, you figured out a way to get their attention. 
So the, the attention economy is actually trying to catch people's eyeball um, so that um, they will come to your website. And once they come to your website, you actually need to thinking about the so-called stickness of your website, which means keep, keep them stay um, on your website as long as possible. That's called stickness. Uh, as an example, for instance, Google is not really a very sticky website. You go to Google, you, you enter your search keyword, and then once you find the website you like, you, 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 you leave Google and, and may not come back uh, in, um, in a short period of time. And so uh, how to get people's attention? Uh, make sure you have um, immediate delivery. Uh, kind of instant uh, gratification uh, to people can can find something can can hear something can view a video uh, or could, can try it out a software provide the personalization provide the user with a lot of guidance and interpretation make sure you try to uh, display your product service as real as possible we call it authentic uh, authenticity, and make sure that uh, your your um, website is accessible uh, on various device, particular mobile device, which become more and more popular. And um, make sure you you give user a good experience so that they would uh, support your website. And last, not the least, is this what we call findability, which means make sure you have your, sometimes we call it digital footprint, uh, spread around and cover enough area so people can find you. Uh, not only they can find you, once they come to your website, make sure many of product and services you carry on your website can be easily identified <coughs> and search by your user. Uh, please refer to this link um, to, to find out more about this attention economy. And the attention economy to some extent is related to the so-called re reputational economy. Um, and, and but it's it's kind of very fuzzy to try to describe this uh, this concept. But Google make it uh, much easier for us to kind of describe it. So let's use Google search engine example. And if, if you go to Google's website and enter a keyword, um, a list of website will show up um, based on its reputation. Um, and, and Google use an algorithm to determine the uh, search result list in terms of the ranking of the website on the result list. The algorithm is called page rank. Um, <clears throat> the page rank to a certain extent is based on the reputation of your website. What, what does that mean by your reputation? When a lot of other uh, websites in a similar um, area, uh, for instance, the MIS website, a lot of MIS websites are, are, um, have links from their website pointing to your website then uh, your page rank will be will be higher, which means you got a pretty good reputation in the network world by by other people. Um, so it's actually a very democratic system. Um, it's kind of the vote of confidence and by the citizens on, on the web. So once you have the the reputation, then. Uh, that would drive the traffic to your website such that you will get the attention. And once you get your attention, then it's up to you how you want to take advantage of the attention that you're getting. Uh, one way to generate revenue is to sell ad space, advertising space, to actually make some money. So from reputation to attention, from attention eventually for and you can bring in revenue to support your um, online business operation. Uh, this is actually adapted from um, Chris Anderson. Um, he has a book called Why Free uh, Zero is the Future of Business. 
Last, let's uh, look at the network effect. Sometimes we call it um, network externality, which is a little bit more academic term. Um, network effect or network externality basically um, means that when more user here at the uh, x axis that when more users join your network the value of your network to the user will increase okay so the value of your of your network to individual user in on your network will increase and let's just use a old technology example uh, for instance a fax machine Okay, can you imagine someone rush out and purchase the world first fax machine? How useful is that? Okay, you may find out that it's useless, totally useless, because if you have only one fax machine, you cannot fax to anybody else. So at least you need to purchase two. Give one to maybe your branch office so that it, the headquarters and branch office can fax to each other. Okay, and why, as an example, why did I purchase my fax machine? Because um, quite a while ago, um, in, in many occasions, I had people ask me, do you have a fax? Do you have a fax? Can I fax it to you? Or can you fax something to me? Uh, eventually, I, I first I, I went to like stable to fax stuff to, um, to another party, but then it, it turned out to be just um, a little bit too expensive and inconvenient. So I ended up purchasing a fax machine. And once I have it, I start asking other people, oh, can you fax to me? Or can I fax something to you? And, and that helped the growth of the, uh, of the network. And because when more people have the fax machine, then I can have um, more opportunity to use the fax machine. Okay. This is the same thing for uh, a more modern social network website, such as Facebook or, or Skype, which is... Um, a software for voice over IP, so you can talk to another Skype user over the phone without paying a long distance phone call cost. Okay. Uh, think about how, uh, I, I believe most of you um, has an account on Facebook. Think about why you joined Facebook. Okay. So this um, network effect is important. Um, if you start a business, a lot of online business require you to have enough user to, to create the value for um, the user who use your services. So how do you grow your user population um, to a critical mass to make your system worthwhile is an important challenge. And that's why for a lot of particular service-oriented uh, website uh, at their um, ramp-up stage over here, uh, the service tends to be free because you want that momentum. Okay, After you have um, overcome the hurdle, uh, build up enough momentum, then you need to think about, okay, how, how can I monetize um, the website, which means how can I make money uh, from the website, either through ads or by providing uh, some additional add-on for fee services. And this certainly will f um, an issue that we need to address in terms of the revenue stream. And we're going to discuss that um, in, in future lecture. So stay tuned. Um, I'll hope to see you next time.